on this episode of Travelog, it's time to put on your adventurous boots for the second leg of our Western Hainan trip. We'll visit a 1,000-year-old celebrity, seek an elusive monkey, and learn that money really does grow on trees. Welcome back to our Hainan series. So, let's continue from where we left off in the last show, Banjo City. Morning, I hope you've slept well. We are on our way to Zhonghe ancient town, where we're going to visit a very special person. You'll see soon. Well, we've arrived at uh, what is essentially the middle of nowhere, that's why I find it even more impressive that there's a huge imperial mansion just over there. And I bet you couldn't believe that it was built for just one person. Han Chinese people first arrived in Hainan 2,000 years ago. Back then, this island was a place of exile, since it sat at the farthest edge of the Chinese empire. Only disgraced officials would be sent here. But one particular official fell in love with this place after being banished here. And he was one of China's most famous literary giants. This entire place was built for a guy called Su Dongpo, who was an 11th century poet, he was an architect, he was a calligrapher, he was pretty much good at everything, except he wasn't very good at holding in a string. But he liked it anyway, so he thought of another way to get students to pay his tuition. And since they were poor, they couldn't pay him money. So that's the reason why he named this place Bring Me Alcohol. Su Dongpo shot to celebrity status by attaining the highest possible mark in the imperial exam at the age of 19. Unfortunately, he was an outspoken man and his criticisms of the imperial court got him exiled here for three years. When he first arrived, he stayed at a local government office. He got kicked out. So he camped in the forest. But because he was so nice to the locals, they ended up building him a hut. Over the years, the hut grew to become one of the most prestigious teaching academies in China. Su Dongpo had taught the once illiterate locals to ace the imperial exam. So what do you reckon this looks like? I reckon it's just a flower, but um, the guy who got Su Dongpo exiled, he was also a poet, and he wrote that this looks like five dogs crouching in a flower. And Su Dongpo thought, no, nah, no, nah, that's ridiculous, that's absolutely silly, that can't be possible. But when he did finally get exiled here, he looked at this, and he realised he was wrong all along. So he called this the puppy flower. <laughs> The moral of the story is, be careful next time you laugh at someone's poem. Then again, if Su Dongpo hadn't come here, he wouldn't have written his famous poems about Hainan's laid-back way of life. And the people of Danzhou would have lost out on a great teacher too. Today, you'll still find his legacy in the nearby Zhonghe ancient town. It might look a bit rustic now, but keep in mind this town's been around for more than 1,000 years. You might even find Su Dongpo's poems and couplets proudly hanging above the entrance to some of the houses here. I don't know about you, but I can see why he liked this side of Hainan. It's relaxed, and everyone goes about life at their own pace. Plus, there's a sense of community here, kind of like Beijing's old hutongs. 
I wouldn't mind spending three years here either. I might not be able to understand everything the locals say, but they're just as friendly to me as I guess they were to Sudongpo when he first arrived. <laughs> Our kids, always full of energy. Actually, I'm surprised they weren't having a nap, since over here it gets ridiculously hot in the afternoon. That's why most people you see walking around town are sporting something called a doli, a bamboo hat. Very good for preventing the sun from burning off your eyebrows. Eyebrows or not, I'm heading to a local tourist attraction. This is the Nianji Temple. It's the oldest place of worship in Zhonghe ancient town. Funnily enough, it's not a deity that gets worshipped here, but a regular person. The lady in question brought together all the tribes of Hainan and united this island. And these statues, from the Song or possibly the Tang dynasty, pay tribute to her leadership. If you look closely, you'll see all sorts of historical relics around town. Why? Well, possibly because Zhonghe ancient town was once prosperous, thanks to it being the seat of the local government. Apparently, it also did quite well in silver crafting and dentistry. Yeah, I've got to say, this place is pretty beautiful. I heard that um, you know, they've got a lot of old ancient architecture, but it stretches back all the way from something like the Song Dynasty to the uh, Republic of China era, a monument to Chinese history. If you are an architecture buff, or just appreciate being able to walk around an ancient town where people are still going about their daily lives, come here. You won't be disappointed. Hello! Coming up next, we'll check out some stalagmites that go bump in the night, grab a bit of R&R &R at a nature retreat, and catch a game of Go on the beach. Time to move on from Danzhou. Next stop, Changjiang County. Whoa. Oh my god. Welcome to the Emperor's Cave. Roomy enough to fit an entire football pitch inside. Hello! Anyone home? Ooh, I'm going to suck your blood. OK, so the cave is a bit creepy, but inside you can find all sorts of cool limestone formations, like an emperor's throne, or Guan Yin, the goddess of mercy, or a friend from another planet. Right, time to get back to the real world. As China's only tropical island, Hainan is home to many species of flora and fauna. In this particular wetland reserve, here in Changjiang County, you can find at least a couple dozen species of birds, if you know where to look. But of course, with wetlands come mosquitoes, so make sure you bring insect repellent. That, or ask the hotel to give you some. What? Yeah, that's right, this is a wetland reserve with a twist. This entire area, including the reserve, the nearby forest, and the stretch of beach behind it, is a part of a resort. Only this resort caters to nature lovers, and has been in development for 13 years. Now that's dedication. Makes you wonder sometimes that there can be forests like these, where you seem to be completely at peace. Oh, would you look at that? Woo! 
Welcome to your very own beach. Population, one. Ah, oh, I can't begin to tell you how amazing that feels. It's like pretty much having your own private beach back there. I mean, look at it. You've got clear turquoise waters, these beautiful sands, and uh, to top it off, there's accommodation right back there, so you can go stay there after you finish sun tanning. And we're also close to a wetlands reserve. But I do have to tell you a secret. This place isn't open for business yet, but when it is, I'm sure it will be a proper hit. But in the meantime, if you're craving company, you can stroll down to Qi Zivan, which loosely translates to Chess Peace Bay. It gets its name from the colourful pebbles that wash up here. They resemble Qi Zi, the pieces that are used in the game of Go. Although nowadays, you'll probably be making them into a fancy bit of potpourri, rather than actually using them for Go. To each their own. Hey, ni hao. Today's show how's it going? Ah, just came. Hi. Of course, it's a it's a different type of beach. It is over here. Uh, a bit risky climbing all over all over these boulders, I'd say, but very adventurous. And I guess it gets even more beautiful around sunset which is pretty much now. But this kind of beach, this beach, Tizavan, isn't really popular with tourists outside of Hainan, but the locals come here because it's nice and peaceful, quiet, and it's just beautiful, really. A great place to watch the sunset, preferably with a loved one, or by yourself, whatever floats your boat. Well, you know how it is with tourist spots. The locals always want to keep the best for themselves. But, you know what? I can't blame them. Ah. Honestly, this is the type of Hainan that people want to see. I mean, I'm all good with beaches and whatnot, but... You can't beat living in what feels like a lost valley from Jurassic Park down this one narrow mountain road. And uh, even if it makes things a little bit less accessible, I still wouldn't stop it for the world. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. From the beach, we've come back into the mountains to visit the Baolonglian Nature Reserve. It's home to over 2,500 species of animals and plants, as well as more than 600 types of trees. Also, the world's most endangered monkey, the black-crested gibbon, lives here, although I wouldn't count on spotting any. For now, just enjoy strolling through this natural oxygen bar and getting a closer look at our invertebrate friends. But not too close. That's too close. That's even closer. No, I'm not in that. I'm not in that. I'm going to get poisoned. Thanks to good conservation, Baolongliang has become a haven for scientists. It's also great for tourists, since its well-maintained boardwalks stretch deep into the heart of this reserve. Just don't get lost among its myriad trees. When you come here, make sure to wear long sleeve shirts and trousers. A hat would also be good against the leeches that sometimes drop from trees. And mosquito repellent is a must. We've come to this Baoling nature reserve and there are so many trees and so much oxygen, it kind of makes you go a bit dizzy from too much. And we came here to find a supposedly very rare black crested gibbon but uh, so far we've not found anything except for creepy crawlies and this absolutely huge tree. I mean, look at it. It's massive. If I put my arms around it, it'd take at least six or seven of me to get across the entire base. But this isn't even the biggest. This place is perfect for dendrologists, 
that's true scientists to you and me. Although I can't for the life of me differentiate between all this arbor. I just think it's very pretty. It might not look like it, but this tree is the oldest one here. It was 600 years old before Christ was even born. So I reckon if I take a nap down here, then I should live to be pretty long. Just fingers crossed, no leeches fall on my face. I feel younger already. Just southwest of Baowanglian is Dongfang City. This place is big on shipping, having made the most of its location by opening up seven ports around the city. As you've probably noticed, the winds here are pretty strong, which is great for generating electricity, but probably not so great for swimming. Ah! completely forgot about that. Well, we've reached Dongfang and uh, if you see that lighthouse behind me, that is the westernmost tip of Hainan Island. And although today we didn't have much luck with any endangered animals, who knows what luck might bring us tomorrow. That's the stuff then. Sometimes you need a break like this. I mean, sitting here, I'm eating, well, I've eaten fish from the uh, Dagomba Reservoir behind me. I've got rice from the paddy fields below me and uh, chicken that's been roaming around this area. And I think sometimes you really need a rest stop like this. Ah, uh, uh, uh. What a tight leash here. <laughs> like the wind turbines by the sea, the Da Guangba Reservoir was built to supply Hainan with electricity. It also supplies water for irrigation and most importantly, freshwater fish for the villages that dot the reservoir. That's pretty hard to believe that you can get fish this big in this reservoir. The freshwater fish also makes a welcome change to all the seafood we've been having. It might not look like it, but this reservoir is actually 50 meters deep. And not only is it teeming with fish, it's also used by local fishermen for aquaculture. And telltale signs of fish farms are everywhere. <laughs> I didn't do that, that wasn't me. <laughs> what a bunch of jokers. I think it'd be great to work with these guys. Coming up next, we'll find out what tree is almost literally worth its weight in gold and visit a dancing, prancing species of deer brought back from the brink of extinction. Time to move on. Although it might seem like we're constantly on the road, the distance we travel is never really long. Even between counties, it's usually just a two hour drive, max. But don't worry, the place we're going to next is still in Dongbang City. Ta-da! We've arrived! And yes, I know what you're thinking. But trust me, there is a reason why we've come to see yet more trees. Actually, we're just here to see one type of tree. A type 
that grows very slowly but very well in Dongfang. And due to its dwindling resources, it's very high in demand. So much so that some people will pay a small fortune for just one branch. Hey, you know, I've been staring at that tree for absolutely ages because I've been trying to remember it. This is no ordinary tree, it's the yellow rosewood and it's worth a lot of money. Actually, according to experts, the yellow rosewood growing here in Dongfang is meant to be the best. So I've come to see a local artist who pretty much got an entire private collection. <笑>香香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多了香不多
咱们还还目前还真没看到公的呢。哦。现在你们很成功了，但从二十六一直到一千多呢，但是非常成功。可是也还少，因为这全全世界也就在海南这就这个头颅。Alongside habitat loss, Datian slope deer were once almost hunted to extinction. But after three decades of hard work, they now number at over 1,400. It's thanks to people like these conservationists here and up at Baoangli that a precious species like this can live to see a new dawn. You know, it makes me pretty happy that uh, we finally got to see some stags Although the wild ones don't really let us get close to them, they always maintain a distance of what, maybe 30 meters or so. But we still got a glimpse of them, and the way that they run away, they prance, it's absolutely beautiful. But for now, we've run out of time. So make sure you tune in next time to continue watching our Hainan series. Bye-bye for now.